Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here today on RJ's Trains. Today we have a ton of new engines to take a look at. So without any further ado, let's dive into it today on RJ's Trains. Now the first brand new locomotive to my collection that we'll be taking a look at today is one that you've already seen in one of my previous videos. Well, you should have seen it if you've watched the video. And that is this Lionel Legacy Long Island Railroad Camelback. Now I already had the blue one, which was a custom run done by the Nassau Lionel Operating Engineers Club here on Long Island, but I picked up the catalog version in the all black. So if you want to see it run, make sure to go check out my last video where I ran it alongside the other Camelback. Now, running alongside this gorgeous Lionel Legacy Camelback is a box in from Trains, and that's Trains with a Z. Use code RJTRAINS off your next order to save $10 off any order, $50 or more. So without any further ado, let's open up this box. And to probably nobody's surprise, the car inside that purple box was another Long Island Railroad wood-sided passenger car. I love these passenger cars. They are super detailed and very nice. And these are very hard to find, especially in the Long Island paint scheme. Well, now that we've got the new passenger car out of the box and settled on the track, let's run these Camelbacks. While we do run these Camelbacks, make sure to look out for a couple of new custom run pieces of rolling stock that I've gotten in, including a Jack Daniels reefer, from Metka, a Union Line PRR box car from Metka, and a Long Island Bobber Caboose by the Nassau Lionel Operating Engineers designed by yours truly. We are back with our second brand new engine this video. It is a gorgeous MTH Premier Proto Sound 3, Baltimore, Ohio, number 4500 Mikado. Now you might be thinking, RJ, didn't you just do a video on an LNN MTH Premier Mikado like a couple of months ago? And you'd be correct. I actually ended up trading that LNN Mikado for this gorgeous Baltimore, Ohio one at Toy Trains and Collectibles in Manassas, Virginia. I just didn't really have that much of a sentimental attachment to the LNN, but 4500 is an engine that I'm very familiar with. 4500 I have visited many times at the Baltimore, Ohio Railroad Museum. Running alongside 4500 today, we have one of its stable mates at the Baltimore, Ohio Railroad Museum number 5300, the President Washington. These two engines have had a huge impact on my life, and I'm really glad to have both of them in my collection. 
So without any further ado, let's fire them up and run them around the lamp. <laughs> I know why that railroad was called the B and O. It stands for Baltimore and Ohio. And we are back for the third brand new locomotive of this video. And if you guys know anything about me and about my collection and about my channel, you might be awfully surprised to see a Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive sitting here beside me. Because as you know, my attitude towards the Pennsylvania Railroad is something like this. F everybody associated with the Pennsylvania Railroad. So you might be wondering to yourself, RJ, why the heck did you buy a Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive? And another Mikado, no less, another 282 wheel arrangement, but it was called an L1 by the Pennsylvania Railroad. Well, that's because this technically really isn't a Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive. Number 1286 ran and operated on Long Island for several years during World War II, the Pennsylvania Railroad sent several L1s to the island for heavy freight train operations. Now, somewhat surprisingly, the L1s were the only locomotives to ever operate on Long Island in which a photograph was never taken. And that was because a lot of the rail fans during that time were off overseas fighting in the war. But we know that the L1s did operate on Long Island thanks to the railroad's extensive paperwork files. And we have a sound recording of the L1s operating on Long Island. So let's listen to that right now. I might be crazy for having a third scale Mikado in my collection, joining Southern 4501 and the aforementioned B&O number 4500. But the L1s hold a special place in Long Island railroading history by being the largest steam locomotives to ever haul revenue trains on the island. And for that, I knew I needed one for my collection and number 1286, no less.
And last but finally not least, the engine that you've all been waiting to see. It is an MTH Premier Proto Sounds 3 4664 Challenger painted up in the Clinchfield Railroad. And so I've certainly built a reputation for myself for loving small steam locomotives. I mean, we've seen two of them so far in this video between the two Camelbacks and the Long Island Railroad G5. And I often get teased about that from my buddies. You know, why, why don't you have an articulated steam locomotive? Ah, you just, you just love your small trains. The truth is I've always wanted an articulated steam locomotive, but I don't love a lot of the railroads that ran articulated steam locomotives like the Norfolk and Western or the Union Pacific or the Pennsylvania Railroad for that matter. And so when I got this opportunity to trade for this Clinchfield Challenger from my friend Evan, you might know him as Diaz Real Fanning on Instagram, link to his Instagram page down below. I jumped at the opportunity because I love the Clinchfield Railroad, a nice coal hauling railroad through the Appalachian Mountains that's very underappreciated in O scale. So I'm super stoked to finally have an articulated steam locomotive in my collection. This thing looks amazing, it sounds amazing, and I did not know that an O gauge steam locomotive could weigh as much as this thing does. But without any further ado, let's fire this thing up, let's run it around the layout, Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 